Ale to, co je, hej, mám něco, ukolo hasáře, laka, a co má? Hej, mi gry, hasáře, hasáře, stane, hasáře, báje, na na ukolo hasáře, mít, hasáře, má hasáře, báku, kana, hasáře, báje, hasáře, má báje, hasáře, báje, kana, anta, hasáře, báje, jako ke. I want to talk to you about one aspect of this Tone Nutrition Program that is near and dear to my heart. So you've already met Pearly. This is the Okala Achukuma project that some of you will work on with me if you use variables that are Native American variables. This has a history that I want to share with you because the story about how it came to be that I'm working in health research um, is not a like straightforward one. So about, let's see, 2009, I became the director of American Indian Studies at the University of Southern Mississippi. And so I started asking uh, elders and people in Native communities. I'm a member of the United Homa Nation, as some of you are. I've been, I was asking them sort of, you know, what do we need to be doing over here at Southern Miss, and what do me, I need to be doing to serve the Native communities in our area? And a lot of the things they were saying had to do with preserving culture. They can be dry okay. and it gives you more body to the uh, basket. And so I started way back in the day going around and having cultural events on campus like that right there. And we ha we already had our own powwow at Southern Miss. A guy named Joe Bohannon was here um, and he started the powwow on campus. We invited uh, activists to campus. Dennis Banks called and asked if he could bring his longest walk folks and spend the night or a couple of nights on campus, and so they did. We had a Southeastern American Indian Festival where we got the Porch Creek Tribe and the Choctaw Mississippi Band Tribe and the Homa. Um, basket weavers and other artists out. That's Dan Isaac right there. I went to any kind of event that was in the area. So like Miss Rose's basket day, I attended that and videoed and um, documented. So Miss Rose has now passed and her store is gone. And so I'm glad I did that. Went to the Cachado Cushada Cultural Conference where this woman right here was teaching us how to uh, burn pots on top of the ground, so make pottery, old time way. Um, I follow around every year, still do, Indian Santa, who is in my tribe, he used to be the chief of the tribe, but he goes around giving toys to all the kids in all the native communities around the Homa area. And I gave a fair number of talks. This one is at the Jenna Choctaw Conference and I'm talking about native plants right there. We went around and built huts. Anywhere we're building palmetto huts, I'll go document that. The social dancing at the Choctaw Indian Fair. And we still hold our own powwow. This is Ryan Bell right here, who was to be the head man at the 2000 20 powwow this year, but we got canceled because of Corona. We also built a garden because some of the elders were saying that, you know, we're losing our knowledge of the plants. We don't understand their ways anymore and we don't know how to tend them and we don't even recognize them when we see them, let alone the medicine that they give to us. We don't know that anymore. And so we built this garden um, to hold medicines and other plants that were used by the Southeastern American Indians for housing and weapons and dyes and food and drink and medicine. And there it is today. Um, so if you're getting a cough, not the corona kind of cough, but a cough, this right here is mountain mint. It'll uh, clear your lungs out. Elderberry will fight off flus. Bone set will help you if you've had a high fever. It'll break the fever. 
uh, Echinacea is an immune uh, enhancer. And this is my favorite over here. This is Muscadine Grape. And Muscadine Grape makes an awesome drink and just they're awesome to eat as well. So we have a lot of information on plants and I go and give talks about plants. This was a taste of the garden. We actually made some foods from some of the plants in our garden on camp and, and served that on campus not too long ago. And then in the middle of my uh, cultural preservation efforts, um, three of my friends died of diabetes and two were in their 40s and one was in his 60s. One was Pearlie's husband. And it kind of hit me at that point that all of the cultural preservation in the world is not really as good as this information being passed down from elders to youth. But if our elders are not surviving uh, past their 40s or 50s in for the most part, then that cultural transmission doesn't occur like it needs to. People in their 40s and 50s are still working. Um, so they don't have time really to sit with the youth and just make that effort of passing on the culture, make it a sustained effort of passing on the culture. And so our folks aren't living for the most part past 50s and 60s. And so I thought, you know, that's the issue. The cultural preservation will come if our folks are living long enough to pass on their culture. And so at that time as well, um, a friend of mine, Jeannie, introduced me to Jennifer, who was in charge of this program. And so we got together and wrote some grants, which we didn't get, but we're still working on it, um, and kind of teamed up. And I said, you know, there are you know, your research is with minority communities, but there's a minority community right here in Mississippi and also in Louisiana, my own tribe, that we have health issues. And so um, we need some help as well in discerning what those issues are and how to impact them in the best way and in a culturally appropriate way. So. So I moved kind of from cultural preservation, not really because I still go to everything imaginable, into health disparities. I picked up health disparities research. So the first thing I did was look to see like, what's our average age? And on average, we die, Native Americans I'm talking about, at 73 years. Whereas in the general population, the average age of death is 78.5 years. But that doesn't tell all the story because I know for sure that in Mississippi, and Louisiana as well for my own tribe, um, we only have about 3% or 4% of people who were more than 65 years old. And in Mississippi in general, there are 16% of people who are more than 65 years old. So we have a lot fewer elders around to pass on our traditions than in the general population, even in Mississippi where you know, the average age of death is lower and, you know, we, we already have more disease and like that. So then I looked at what's, what are the causes of death in American Indian communities and I found out that there's alcohol and chronic liver disease, fatty liver disease as well from uh, fatty foods. Um, diabetes is a big one, the ratio, we're three times more likely to die of diabetes. And some some issues we don't have like uh, diseases of the heart. Sometimes I think maybe we just don't live long enough to even experience those. That's the problem with that. So I looked at obesity rates and I saw that, you know, American Indians in the U.S. are more obese than Caucasians, but in Louisiana and Mississippi and Alabama, even more so than Caucasians in those states. Well, we're not as active. So this is days of physical act inactivity or the per no activity in the last 30 days. So 30% of people, 28% of people said they didn't, they weren't physically active in the last 30 days versus 25% of, and in Mississippi, 44% of people said they were not active in the last 30 days compared to 31% of Caucasians. Also our fruit and vegetable intake is a little bit different. So we're eating, 
more of us are eating less than one fruit. So we're lower on fruit eating than Caucasians, but we're, we're similar on vegetable eating. So we're getting those, I guess that's beans and cabbage and things like that. In Mississippi, even more so. So we're not eating fruits, but we are eating vegetables. And so with that in mind, we designed um, an Okala Achukama project, Healthy People project, where we are looking for psychosocial facilitators and barriers to behavior change so that people can identify uh, behaviors that they want to change, like eating patterns and physical activity patterns, and address those in their own lives. Um, it's a three-year project, and we have already started, and you're going to be part of that. We're basing it on this Move and Eat to Live program where we meet weekly with people. I guess at first we're going to have to do that maybe online, depending on when, when we get started with meetings. We are basing these adaptations to Indian Country on this evidence-based intervention, Move and Eat to Live, where people engage in weekly meetings with sort of like a health coach, a motivational interviewer, someone who's there to listen to what your barriers are and your facilitators and help you think through and change your behavior in ways that you want to and are comfortable with and in ways that are sustainable. The foundation of our adaptations in the Indian country follow this medicine wheel. So we're gonna address the four aspects, like in here, the four directions, the four aspects, mental, physical, um, relationship, and spiritual aspects of what it is to be a human being in the intervention, um, in addition to the Move and Need to Live component. The Move and Need to Live is sort of like the um, mental and um, physical aspects and we're adding spiritual and relationship emotional aspects to that program so during the summer of 2019 we had Mississippi Embrace Scholars like you guys and they facilitated three focus groups in Native communities and participated in two Native focus outreach events so here are our group of scholars from last year this is that little boy that you saw early on in the powwow with beaver. Here are our scholars getting set up for the Mississippi and Choctaw Indians Unity Walk. That was fun. Here are the stickball players coming in, the drummers leading the stickball players in as part of the Unity Walk. Here's all of the people coming in this is Darlene Lillis. Look at there. Here they are, ready for people to show up and try out their not sweet drinks. We had fun. This is us at the Choctaw Indian Fair set up to um, explain to people about dietary choices that don't add a lot of sugar and that are lower in fat, healthier. Here are people lined up to take our survey. We're gonna be sending out these surveys. You guys are gonna be sending out these surveys um, online. Here we are meeting the princess, the new Choctaw Indian princess. Here's Ryan again, who was gonna be our head man after his um, social dancing. We had an awards ceremony. So like you guys are uh, getting points for awards. We had an awards ceremony. That's RJ from my tribe, from Swamp People. And there's Dr. Fred Hickman. Here's RJ given Dr. Elasri a medallion. And here's Xavier giving RJ a medallion. And here we have one of the scholars arm wrestling RJ and RJ won. We presented posters at several conferences. And here's some of the results that we got from our survey. So 
We surveyed 141 Native Americans, 81% female. The average age was 41. 64% had an income less than $30,000, no college degree, and mostly they were Baptist. 28% of Native Americans, so about a third of the Native Americans in the sample reported that their health was very good or excellent and about a third reported being diagnosed with diabetes with only 13% of those saying that their health was very good or excellent. 41% reported being obese with only 15% of those reporting that their health was very good or excellent. We related um, exercise and diet to weight control ability, social supports, for exercise, social support for diet, and got a lot of interesting relationships. So social support for exercise is related to how much you exercise. So if you have a team around you or a relative or someone who's encouraging you, oh yeah, I know you don't feel like getting up and getting out, but it stopped raining, go exercise, uh, you're more likely to do it. Um, also eating healthy, same thing. You're more likely to do it with somebody. Um, Self-efficacy, if you believe you can do, do it, if you believe that you can get up every day and exercise and you believe it's doable to cook healthy meals that are also good tasting, you can do it. Also access is important. Um, access to fruits and vegetables and access uh, to uh, safe environments to exercise in are related to exercise and diet. Your mental health and physical health. We found a relationship between mental health and physical health and whether you exercise and whether you eat fruits and vegetables. And also mental health and physical health in our sample of natives is related to social support, social and emotional support, and social support for exercise and social support for diet. Not, not um, surprisingly at all. We also had two focus groups, no, three focus groups. And we talked about, we asked people about facilitators of maintaining a healthy weight and preventing disease. And people told us that they, what encourages them to maintain a healthy weight is the fact that they can look better and feel better. They live longer. They avoid amputations that diabetes will, will um, result in amputations of limbs and avoiding that is a motivator for for eating healthy and maintaining a healthy weight. Um, healthy cooking and prevention of other illnesses as well. So here's what a 40 year old female said. She said that around fair time there were people her age or younger already in a wheelchair and when she saw that, she thought, oh my gosh, I've got to, you know, do better. His, the person she saw had a leg amputated and he was younger. And he told them that diabetes got him and that motivated her to eat better and get more physical activity. Barriers to maintaining a healthy weight and preventing a disease, we talked about those as well. Well, evidently, you know, the pizza and the burgers and the fries taste better. They're more convenient and they're cheap. And over here, the salad and the apples and the blueberries, they're not convenient to get and they're not easily available. You can't go to a fast food restaurant and quickly get blueberries. And they're expensive as well. And also this down here, tradition. So let's look at that a little bit. We had a, a male... Um, interviewer, interviewee, say that some women may think they're showing love to their families by making good, rich, fatty, big meals, but in the long run, it's not good. Here are some, um, what gets in your way of physical activity. So, I'm too old, too tired, I got health issues. I got injuries, I don't have time, I don't have exercise equipment, I don't have motivation, and there's one that we need to talk about called fatalism. So fatalism is, is an issue. 
people say things like, you know, if it's in your genes, if it's hereditary, then you're just going to be diabetic. And in my opinion, I don't think I think that diabetes can be prevented. But you know what? We can do this. In the Okla Chukuma intervention model, um, we're working with this as, this medicine wheel as the foundation. So what we're thinking is that we need to get the mental aspect of ourselves aligned and in service of being a healthy person, of being Okla Achukuma, and the spiritual aspect of ourselves. We need to address that fatalism and it, the emotional aspect of ourselves. We need to address community support. We need to support one another in this. And we know how to diet and exercise. We need to make sure we're doing those things and understand what we're doing and why and what it is about it that's beneficial and how so. We can do this. Here's Pearly making cabbage and beans. We can do this. And hominy in the black pot. And here we are building a garden. That's Dustin John and John, Dustin and John, <laughs> building a garden in one of our communities in Blackman's Parish. And here's Monique and Haley uh, building a lean-to. And here I am in the middle of a palmetto hut we can do this. We can work together and do this. I want to let you know that Ryan passed of COVID, but he's still going to be our head man in the 20, probably it's going to be a 21 powwow, and we're going to have the other men help him out. We can do this. we got to work together. Thank you so much. I'm so glad you guys are here.